Okay, we're picking up now where we left off in the previous video. And what we're doing is, in the last video, we introduced the concept of exponential generating functions. And we discussed their importance because they're used to solve permutation problems. And we were trying to get a demonstration as to how it works. And what we considered was we had two square objects and two round objects, and we're asking ourselves, how many different ways can we choose from these objects where the order matters? So, for example, how many ways can we choose three of these objects only the order matters now when we make our selections? And what we did was we described the generating functions for the squares, the exponential generating functions, and also we described the exponential generating functions for the circles, and then we multiply the two expressions together. And that gave us this expression here. Now we want to point out that here the coefficient of x, this is 1, 1 over 1 factorial, this is 1 over 1 factorial, so the coefficient of x is 2. Likewise, for x squared, this is 1 half, plus 1 half, that's 1, this is 1, so the coefficient of x squared is 2. Likewise, the coefficient of x cubed, this comes out to 7 6, this comes out to, for x to the 4, this is 5 twelfths, and for x to the 5th we have 1 half times 1 6, that's 1 12. So we're going to write this now using these numbers for our coefficients. So what we have is, when we multiply these two functions together, we have it equals 1, plus we have 2 times x over 1 factorial plus 2, oops, we don't have a 1 factorial yet. We just have 2 times x plus 2 times x squared, and we get 7 sixths times x cubed, and we get 5 twelfths times x to the 4, and 1 12 times x to the 5th. So all we've done so far is just, we wrote down what the exponential generating function is for the squares, for the circles, and then we said if we want to consider all the objects together, we want to find the two generating functions together. And that gives us this expression right here. Now, here's why this is important. If we say, well, we have two squares and three circles, how many ways can we select three of the objects in the order in which we select the matters? How many different ways can we do that? And the answer is, it is the coefficient of x cubed divided by 3 factorial. Or if we want to know how many ways can we select four of these objects when the, ad, when the order matters, the answer is, it is the coefficient of x to the 4 divided by 4 factorial. Well, look at our problem. The way it stands right now is we know the coefficient of x cubed, but not of x cubed over 3 factorial. So if we divide this by 3 factorial, then we also have to multiply the top part by 3 factorial. And make this leader here. This is 7 6. So here, let's just start at the beginning. This is 1. This can be 2 times x over 1 factorial, because 1 factorial is just 1. Here, we have 2 
that we have exported the two factorial and have to multiply by two factorial. Well, two factorial is just two, so this would be plus four times x squared divided by two factorial. Let's continue along. Here we have x cubed divided by 3 factorial. If we multiply by 3 factorial, that's 6. 6, these cancel. So this is plus 7 times x cubed over 3 factorial. Now here we have 5, 12 times x to the 4th. We want to know what is the coefficient of x to the 4th divided by 4 factorial. So we multiply this times 4 factorial. That's 24. Divided by 12 is 2 times 5 is 10. So we have plus 10 times x to the 4th divided by 4 factorial. One more to go. We have x to the fifth. So we have 112 times x to the fifth. But we want to know what is the coefficient of x to the fifth divided by 5 factorial. So we have to multiply the top part by 5 factorial. And that's 120 divided by 12 is 10. So we have plus 10. Put it down here. Plus 10 times x to the fifth divided by 5 factorial. And so what this means then, this tells us that all right, finally, here we have these five objects. These two are identical, and these three are all identical objects. How many ways can we choose four of these objects in the order of matters? The answer is, there's ten different ways to do that. How many ways can we select three of these objects? For order matters? The answer is 7. 7 is the coefficient of x cubed divided by 3 factorial. How many ways could we select 2 of them for the order matters? The answer is 4. 4 is the coefficient of x squared divided by 2 factorial. And in fact, here, You can see that here are the objects. Here we're going to select two of them for the order of matter. So there's one, two, three, four ways to do it. Or if we select three of them in the order of matters, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different ways to do it. Seven is the coefficient of x cubed divided by Factorial. So that is sort of the uh, nuts and bolts of stuff on how exponential generating functions are used. And again, here, the way that we, the logic behind it is exactly what we did in the previous videos for the ordinary generating functions. We have two objects here in our selection. We might choose zero of them, which is x to the zero of one. We might select one of them, that's x to the one. Or we might select two of them, that's x squared. But now, when we're doing our selections, the order matters. It's a permutation problem. So now we have these factorials down here for exponential generating function. Same logic for the circles. Then, to consider 
all the objects together, we multiply the two generating functions together. That gave us this expression. We modified it so that we could determine the coefficients of x squared over 2 factorial, x cubed over 3 factorial, x to the 4th over 4 factorial, x to the 5th divided by 5 factorial, and then these coefficients tells us the number of ways that we can commute with these objects here. So, that in a nutshell is um, the idea behind um, explicit generating functions. Now here the problem is pretty simple actually. It was long and tedious, but it's a simple problem really. What we're going to do in the next video is consider some of the mathematical properties of exponential functions, and then we'll use those properties to solve some more complicated problems. So come back and join us for those videos, and we'll try and solve some more problems.